All right, so I'm going to start off by saying Happy New Year's to everybody. Hopefully you guys had fun. Hopefully you got drunk, but not too drunk. You know, hopefully you guys remember what happened last night is what I'm trying to say. And uh, just want to thank everybody for subscribing to me. Uh, I know I don't really ask people to subscribe, you know, I don't, it's not really how I do it. I just, if you like what, I, what you see and you subscribe, you know, thank you. I really do appreciate it. I talk to a lot of you guys through messages and all of you guys are hella cool. So I'm, I'm really happy I'm doing this because it feels like I've made a lot of new friends this uh, past year. So hopefully I keep, uh, keep this up. You know what I mean? But anyways, uh, we're going to take a quick little look at D-Pan Linux or D-Pin, right? And, um... It's a cool little little distro which is based on Ubuntu, but it's from China, and they did what kind of like what Linux Mint did, right? They removed Unity, right? And in its place, they used GNOME Shell. But instead of uh, using you know GNOME Shell, the default GNOME Shell, they do a little spin on it, right? With through extensions and stuff like that. And I'll get into that later. But um, let's see. One of the biggest things that people have been talking about this distro is the Software Center. Right, it's not using the default Ubuntu Software Center at its own little application, and I think it's written in Qt. It looks like it, but I could be wrong. Anyways, here it is. It's really nice. It's real clean. I mean, real user friendly, and uh, you can change the look of it if you wanted to. Right, you click on like those little images and they change. Right, and blue and there's black. Let's try this uh, purple one, I guess. All right. Anyways, so as you can see, there's, there's uh, default three applications, like a showcase, uh, GTK Pod or whatever, Chromium, and it's really slick. I like how they do it, and I'm gonna assume that they're gonna do what Ubuntu does with their software center. Like every month or so, they they switch it up a bit with some other default applications, right? Um, the home page is basically like a little quick list of the of um, of the uh, popular applications in the respected category, like uh, like internet or whatever, sound and video, graphics, games, right? So like on GIMP, you click on GIMP, and it takes you to GIMP, of course. Gives you a little overview, right? Along with a screenshot. And at the very bottom is like, a, you know, some um, reviews, but it's in Chinese, of course. So it's translated to English except for the reviews. So that's kind of a, kind of sad, I guess. But anyways, hit the little back button to go back a step. And yeah, and once it's installed, as you can see, there's a little start button. You click the start button and the lap application starts. And uh, let's go down, scroll down. Wine, other. So you kind of get the idea of the home page. But if you want to actually go more in depth and look for applications, um, you go to repository. And even though it says repository, I haven't seen, a, I, I don't know of a way on through the software center to add a repository so I can't really fault them for that because I, I can totally understand they're, if they're trying to keep it stable I guess you don't really want to have a third-party application to be installed through their software center you have to go around all that stuff I guess just to make it you know stable I guess but I don't know so anyways so if you want to search for applications you go to the little search section right here the little search uh, box type GIMP I guess use GIMP as another example and it actually filters out the uh, the miscellaneous stuff like GIMP data extras. That's like extra brushes and extra gradients and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool how it's all in that little search box. So I'll go to return. Let's go back. So let's go to another category like Office. Genomeric. Let's click on that. Again, another little overview along with a screenshot and maybe one review maybe not I don't know so anyways simple like this is real simple you know install let's go back so that's pretty much how it works you know nothing too hard just straightforward uh, upgrades I'm gonna assume that's your up upgrade manager or update manager uh, I haven't been prompted for any type of upgrade or upgrades yet so I can't really you know show you how that works but that's that's it Uninstall, just, you know, wait sounds, you know, just uh, find an application you want to remove, click the uninstall button, and it removes it. So, real easy. And downloads, that, that has to do with your, your download catch, not your, your Nautilus folder, like your home folder and your downloads. <clears throat> Every time you install an application through your package manager, it goes into here, your little dev packages. So, it, I guess it just shows you what's in there, I guess. 
Um, I don't know if that's useful or not, but it's there. And if you want to remove it or clean it, you just click the little clean right here, clean download catch. So yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. That's that's the software center. Real simple and it's really quick. So anyways, I'm gonna close that off. Now, as far as the GNOME shell desktop, right? It's as you can see, one of the first things I've noticed is the, the workspace switcher is on the left hand side, right, right here. And <clears throat> I can't find the extension that does that. I'm assuming they did it through code, like they actually, you know, uh, I guess through the root directory or whatever, um, they just did their own thing. So what, through an extension, they removed the dash, which is the dock on the, on, which was on the left hand side, now on the right hand side, it's not there anymore. So by removing the, the dash, they use another extension to, to add your applications on the top panel, right? So I guess to make a, an application permanent, like launch something like Inkscape, I guess. And it'll show up on your top panel. Then of course you have to right click on it and add add to favorites. Close it off. And it gives you cool little previews too. Like if you want to go to your terminal, you can click here. If you want to go back to Inkscape, go back. And Inkscape wasn't installed by default. That's something I did. So anyways, as far as the default applications, you know, it's just a um, uh, Pretty much similar to Ubuntu, I think it has uh, Wine by default, uh, Firefox by default, not Chromium, and no Movie Player. It has no M Player and no Banshee. It has Dead Beef, and there's some other little stuff in there too as well. So it's really slick, really really nice. It's very polished. Um, I can see myself like putting this on a spare machine. You know what I mean? I can see like my grandmother using it. It's really user friendly. Um, what else can I say about it? Well, oh yeah, one one other thing I do like about this, the shell, is the search feature. So if I type like Ubuntu or something, it would be Ubuntu, right? It has uh, different search engines rather than just Wikipedia or Google. It has Google, Bing, Yahoo, right? Flickr, Wikipedia, Twitter, and YouTube. So if I launch YouTube, it'll search Ubuntu on YouTube, right? through Firefox or whatever default browser you're using so yeah anyways so okay let's go with the uh, the backgrounds in case you're wondering about themes and stuff a lot of cool little wallpapers so over here just pick some random ones you guys can get the idea just a lot there's like a lot of green a lot of nature stuff buildings All right, and themes, um, you're going to have to use the, I believe, the tweak tool. There we are. There's themes. It's deep, I guess, their own theming, their own uh, shell thing. Comes with another one, though. All right, it's kind of give you an idea. Uh, extensions, if you want to make the video bigger, you can, if you want to read all this. There you go. So yeah, anyways, so uh, I do recommend it, give it a try. Um, if you do decide to download it and install it, uh, make sure when you uh, boot off the live DVD or CD or USB, um, hit, I believe it's F2 and select English and you'll be able to uh, install it. Well, it'll say install right but it's actually a live session so anyways that's it for today and i'll see you guys later and uh, have a good one